Hello everyone, this is Chaim Durst. Thank you for joining me today and taking time out of your busy schedule to, to uh, attend this meeting. I hope that it's informative. I hope that it uh, inspires you to have confidence that I can uh, take good care of, of your children as they prepare their college applications. A little bit about myself. I went to Hackley, so not too far from you. In fact, many of my best friends lived in Scarsdale at the time. I graduated from Columbia in 1992 with, with awards, and I, spent, I have spent the last 21 years helping students with their college application essays. Wow, just saying that out loud is, is really come, strikes home. This is all I've done for 21 years. Um, just help, help students reflect on who they are and who they desire to be. That's the key of my personal philosophy. I want students to demonstrate vulnerability, self-knowledge, and the capacity to grow. I found after looking at thousands and thousands of essays over these two decades, that the most successful essays are ones in which students are willing to be vulnerable, are willing to demonstrate self-knowledge, and they're willing to show how they'll grow. And as you'll see in the sample essays that I present, some of the essays deal with tension or setbacks or difficulties that students have in their life. Those events are more likely to demonstrate or allow the student to demonstrate these three qualities. So imagine you're an admissions officer and you're looking through thousands of essays, right? They, some of the top universities get 30 or 40,000 applications. So you're reading through thousands of applications. Most of them are talking about an award or some type of service work or an accomplishment. After a while, they all sound the same. How can you really demonstrate the depth of your character through an, talking about an award? Think back on your own life, times of tension or times of challenge or setbacks. Those are the moments that, that shape our character certainly has shaped mine. I don't think of necessarily the happy events as ones that have shaped me into who I am today. It's the challenges. Just so I urge students to look through the lexicon of memories that they have and to call ones that have tension, difficulty, or setbacks. Because by talking about them, they can demonstrate the depth of their character in ways that really move the reader. I ask students three questions throughout the entirety of my mentoring process. Who are you? How did you get that way? And who do you desire to be? Most people never ask themselves those questions in life. We live an unexamined life. If we don't examine our lives, how can we aim them? And when students are young and still have their future ahead of them, I really want them to consider these points. I can't control where a student gets in. But if I ask them to sincerely evaluate these three questions, they're more likely than not going to be able to more deeply understand who they are and the, and the direction they want to go in. And by doing so, they're likely to write a very effective essay because the admissions officer is looking for candidates who have self-knowledge, who are willing to grow, and who are vulnerable enough to learn in an academic setting from mentors and from peers. They don't want students who are arrogant or unreceptive. So that's why I urge students not simply to put them down or to make them look bad in any way. My writing curriculum is called The Art of Essay. It's called that way after Sun Tzu, a line from Sun Tzu's Art of War, where he says, when you're weak, you act strong, and when you're strong, act weak. That really resonates with me in my life. I tend to be very humble and try to be very self-effacing and, and uplift and inspire others because I feel strength of character. I'm not worried about being judged or anything like that. You'll see when we have our conversation, I always try to empower you and your children. I have no 
there's no reason for me to try to act strong because to me, that's a sign of arrogance. Likewise, when the admissions officers see all these students say, oh, I'm great at this, I'm amazing at this, they see that, they can see that as a sign of weakness. But when they see someone say, wow, this is an area I want to grow. This is something that has challenged me and allowed me to more deeply see areas that I can change. That moves the reader. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate a sample essay that embodies many of the techniques that I um, will be teaching your students. I'll be teaching in this essay. I want you to ask yourself, does it show vulnerability? Does it show self-knowledge and the capacity to grow? And when we have the Q&A, you can then ask me. We can look back at this essay and say, well, where did it do that? And I'm going to try to show you that as I uh, go through the essay. Does this essay demonstrate who the student is, how they got that way, and who they desire to be? And these are some of the other techniques that I'll be teaching your student. I believe that you, the pronoun you, is the most powerful word in the entirety of their essay. You is so magical and mystical and flexible. They're talking to aspects of themselves. They're talking to the reader. They can be talking to a character that appears in their essay. They can be talking to some philosophical construct. It is so powerful and something that most students don't write, don't use. That's why when your student does, they're gonna stand out. I urge students to build mystery you're talking to, you're reading to a real person. So they are more likely to be intrigued if there's some suspense, right? Think about your favorite movies or your favorite books. It doesn't just say what happened. It gives you clues and reveals a little bit. And then there's the denouement, the, 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 the reveal. That's a key technique that I teach in this whole process. Also, the method, method of delivery. That when you think of an essay, or when students think of an essay, it doesn't have to be expository or demonstrative. It can be a letter. It can be a, a fragment from a dream. It can be a conversation. It can be whatever the student is most comfortable communicating their identity through. And you're going to see that this particular essay that I'm about to show you is a letter. And one of the keys is not too much description. Or when you use description, it has to be philosophical description. And I'll be demonstrating that later in another example. And the power in, through simplicity. I write like a fifth grader. I talk like a fifth grader. I use very simple sentences. But I think that those simple sentences juxtaposed next to more syntactically complex ones, they, they create interest and they show the reader the range of your students' intellect, emotion, and will. Some of the other uh, techniques that you'll see in this essay in which I teach, I encourage students to talk about conflict. Yes, it's true. We grow the most through conflict in our life. But I don't want them to show that they won or lost, or that doesn't matter. The conflict is completely irrelevant itself. What, what matters is how it shaped them, how, how it formed their character. Also, the importance of friendship and love. And perhaps most importantly, branding. Your student needs to brand themselves in 400 words or so. When the reader closes their eyes after they've finished the essay, can they imagine your student? And the best way to do that is by branding them. Companies spend billions of dollars to brand their items. And your student has 90 seconds or so which is as long as the admissions officers are going to be reading their essay to brand, create a clear brand. So I want, to, I want you to ask yourself, through each of the samples that I'm going to be presenting today, does the writer clearly brand himself? All right, here we go. Rip this. Rip it all. Push me away. What a wonderful opening three sentences. I love it. Short, powerful punches. Look at those verbs. Rip, rip, push. You're going to see throughout the samples, I really stress the use of verbs. No, I've already left. And if you have no parting gifts for me, I want my identity sleeve back. I gave up who I wanted to be to fit in you. Now I am unanchored. Okay, 
Do we know what's happening here? No, it's very mysterious. And yet, we're starting to get hints about the writer's identity. It's all about identity. We see this. You left me with the worst and best parts of yourself. I'm salacious, risk-taking, and generous. Lesser planets revolve around my passion, just as you pick unwinnable fights with folks in faraway places, so do I. All in feisty, self-righteous fury, that is. Well, there's the vulnerability. This writer is talking about weakness, is talking about areas that they need to change. And look at the look at the syntax there. You have the rip, rip, push, and then lit. In this end of the second paragraph, you have this really mellifluous flowing sentence, just as you pick a winnable fight with folks in faraway places, so do I. All in feisty. So this is just like this is a painting, but this is also a sonata, right? Musically and visually, I encourage students to, to alter the tone, the crescendo, and the mood. At times, I want to lose more of who I used to be. At others, I like who I am. Most of the time, that is. Perhaps I'm too impulsive, but I am decisive. I expect to lead, and you've given me the charisma to attract followers, but at what cost? Again, this balance between strength and weakness. It's like this recitative, this sing-song of I am strong in this area, but I'm weak in others. Hun, people hate you for various reasons. What is going on here? Who is she talking to? We still don't know. They don't like who you, what you've done to their children and to their culture. How much of that contamination have you passed on to me? Contamination. There we have the epitome of vulnerability. They're jealous of us both, of our success, of our beauty, and of our desire for perfection. Han, sorry, help me come to terms with that unlovable part of myself or do you have too little self-knowledge left to see clearly? Well, there we have the theme of self-knowledge front and center in this essay. You're the one who polluted my mind with the unattainable. When I first heard about you, your blessings, your dreams, I ran to your arms. You were my first love. I gave up my normal old life to join you. Look how many yous are in that sentence. Back to back to back. You, I, you, I. This clear dialectic this tension, this conflict that this individual is having with this mysterious other, we still don't know. The admissions officer is probably going, what is, what, what, what's, what's, what's next? That's exactly the reaction you want from the reader. You made me move, move, and move again to keep up with my broken dream until I simply refused to, to budge anymore. Even though I've had my disappointments, I'm not willing to give up on our investment of love and effort just yet. You're less colorful without me. I'm far less of everything without you. We're a good fit. Me with my free, loving unpredictability and you, you with your misguided idealism. I am the iconoclastic Aphrodite you seek. You're the dream maker. I love that you, you. Wow, now we've, now it's like the, the, the anger, the storm has passed and now they're trying to reconcile with this unknown other. We've come to the end of this essay and we still don't know exactly what's going on. But that doesn't matter. We've learned so much about this reader, even though we don't explicitly know whom they're talking to. I'll make myself vulnerable to you once again. Will you open your arms to me? Well, will you speak up, America? I can't hear you. So this individual came to me. They had been a boarding school student in America and um, they had to move different times for different reasons and they, they were heartbroken about how America had treated them. And the first version of the essay was, um, I went to America and this happened and that happened and uh, I was disappointed and heartbroken, but I'm willing to take another chance. And I said, well, that's that's an interesting essay and it's very moving and I'm sorry that that happened to you, but how can you create a more poignant, more magical, mystical essay that will likely be a work of art? And this is what she came up with. And I think it was very effective. She got into her first choice college. So just so 
students come to me and I tell them, please write in simple terms. We'll pick a topic. We'll pick an event or an incident that demonstrates their character best. Ask them to write it out in very simple terms. One of the exercises I use is to ask students to write in 10 words or less. Every sentence has a clear subject, clear active verb, clear direct object. Once they've done that, then I say, well, why don't we transform this into work of art? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a before and after where someone came to me and this is, you'll see the, the first version, which is very clear, very simple sentences. It tells a very simple story. And then afterwards, I'll show you how they transform that into a work of art. All right. I went to U.S. for schooling four years ago. This is another student who came to the U.S. And when I returned to Korea, I didn't recognize it. As soon as I exited the subway near my home, I was greeted by trash. It seemed like people just threw away food and beer cans without any concerns for the environment or one another. Okay, clear. My favorite shops had disappeared. Plastic surgery clinics had taken their place. In fact, I could hardly recognize people passing me by. They were whiter than Americans that I studied with. People looked so skinny too, shockingly so. Many looked too skinny to even carry their brand name luxury bags. Excuse me. When I reached the corner, I almost bumped into a grandma sitting into the gutter, in the gutter, selling traditional rice cakes. People ignored her. I bought one of her cakes and wanted to ask her, Grandma, who discarded you in the gutter? What happened to the Korea I knew and loved? On the next block, I passed an odd sign. Earn $3,000 if you have a child, it announced. What could that possibly mean, I asked myself. I was shocked to read that Korea has one of the lowest birth rates in the world. So government, the government is trying to reverse this trend by offering cash to new, to new mothers. At last, I was greeted by a familiar sign, my favorite PC room. I went in expecting to see children my age or younger playing, but all I saw were older men slumped over huge monitors. Cigarette smoke was so thick, I could hardly breathe. The smoke and despair pushed me back out on the street. But I used despair as fuel. As long as I live, so will tradition. The trash, the smoke, the cold metal buildings inspire me to take back the soul of my nation, to embody the best of my culture and values. Grandma, hear my call. I will lift you and the nation out of the gutter, one rice cake at a time. So to give you a little context, this young man uh, had a lot of trouble uh, in uh, U.S. schools, and he had flown back to Korea for, uh, I think, winter break. And his family flew me out to work with him over the break because they wanted to help him to get into good college. So we went for a walk in, uh, in downtown Seoul, and this is the result of the walk. We saw the trash, and we saw the, the plastic surgery clinics, and we saw that sign. And we, we sat there and we discussed. So we got back to my to his, well, his place. And I said, well, write out what you're feeling. What about this is disturb you? Because he was really worked up. And this is, this is the first draft that he presented to me. I said, okay, this is a wonderful, basically descriptive essay. And I said, well, let's transform this into a work of art. This has the past tense verbs. I saw this happened, which doesn't really create immediacy doesn't really grip the reader. It's explanatory. The brand really isn't so clear other than that they're disappointed in a nation. So now I'm going to go through this in more detail. I'm going to check the time here first to make sure. I, okay, we're at the 19 minute mark. Wow, time's going fast. Um, now I'm going to show you how it's been transformed. The first thing that hits me when I exit the subway is the smell of half-eaten fries, beer cans, and greasy cheese steak wrappers hits. I mean, right off the bat, it's present tense. And look at the, um, the pr pronouns are going to be in yellow, the verbs are in red, and the adjectives are going to be in green. I want you to think of this as a painting. Again, this is a work of art. So this is what I do with the essay, is I color code each of the, the, the parts of speech to see the effect that it's having, the, to see the colors that are being painted. Plastic surgery lying both sides of the street, like angry bridesmaids. Every face seems altered, sculpted, knifed. Wonderful, powerful adjectives. 
We're whiter than Americans are now. We're more American than Americans are now. Starving women holding Gucci bags walk the streets like extras in a horror movie. Welcome to Seoul 2009. Where have you gone, tradition? Where have you gone, innocence? A grandma sits in the gutter. In front of her are piles of traditional rice cakes. They're dusty and stale. Who will champion the old Korea? What's left of it? I pass an agency that imports foreign women as wives for farmers. Few Korean women want to live in the countryside anymore. Life there is simply too hard. Government signs cling to poles, offering $3,000 to any, ch- any couple that has a child. Korea is the lowest birth rate in the world because women don't want to be bothered by marriage or family. And I can understand why. They've been treated badly for the last 5,000 years, and now is their chance to escape. I enter a PC room and log onto Final Fantasy XI. The room is packed. Cigarette smoke hangs like a storm cloud in the air, blocking out the light. Hangs, blocking. And look at the use of the pronouns, I, they. We're the, we are the most wired nation in the world. I'm wired to you, you're wired to me, and we're all wired to self-destruct. Who's going to defuse this time bomb? Unlike the first essay, this is we, you, I, me. The play of the pronouns is so profound here. And I say, knife your face. I'm happy with mine. Bleach your skin. I'm yellow and proud of it. Grandma, rise up out of the gutter and dance with me. I'll champion the old Korea, what's left of it. This one paragraph is perhaps the most powerful in the 21 years that I've worked with students. Look at the punctuation, the semicolons in purple, the the play of the pronouns, you, I, my, your, me, I, it. The use of the, the adjectives and the verbs, knife, bleach, rise, dance, champion. Those are some of the most powerful verbs in such a compact uh, paragraph. It's so profound. Empty the trash. Cut the wires. End the games. Be your own final fantasy. I know the final line of this. That's the brand. This student is the final fantasy essay. It went from a very painful walk, very frustrating walk, into what I would argue is a work of art. Does this make the student likable? So that's a, a commonly asked question that I get from students. Well, am I likable? Does this make me likable in the admissions office? I would say 100%. This makes you very. This makes the reader very sympathetic, very empathic, and it makes them very moral and ethical. They want to champion values that seem to have been lost in their, in their mind. Clear branding. It, it holds and grabs the reader's attention to the verb and the adjective use, and it reveals clear aspects of the writer's identity. Absolutely. So this is a before and an after. I would like to show you another example of a personal essay before I get to the why school and why major essays. I think I'm still doing okay on time. Wow, this has gone by really quickly. All right, this, this demonstrates mystery, the magical you, and the emphasis on self-knowledge. I'll read this a little quicker than the last one. You try to make me feel small, colorless, but I'm on to you. You try to plant the seed of insecurity in my growing mind and shower me with false versions of myself. You relentlessly attempt to weaken my self-esteem. Again, we have no idea what's happening here, but already we see the I-U tension here and the power of the verbs and these adjectives. It won't work. I know myself well enough. I love myself well enough not to fall for your lives. The well enough, the well enough. I often encourage students to have this, the, the repetition of, of a motif to create this musical melody. Without me, you're empty, you you condescend. Gain yourself through me, you broadcast the world. I'll construct my identity without your input. Thank you. Again, the emphasis on identity construction, which is the whole point of this essay. You brutally compare me to others who have given in to you. You show me pictures of other women, better dressed, brighter teeth, whiter skin, clutching your hand as they parade down the red carpet of your false dream. Again, do we know who she's talking to? No. Does it matter? No. We see so much about who she is through this tension, through this conflict that she's having with this unseen other. Look at what you're missing out 
You hiss at me from your gilded cage. I stuff up my ear holes against your song of seduction and see you for who you are, a merchant of distorted fantasies. This reference to Odysseus on his raft or ship, stuffing up his ear holes against the song of the sirens. You, on the other hand, okay, again, who? now she's talking to another you. Inspire me to embrace the best of myself. You acknowledge that all I have, that I have all I need within me. Represent your own standard of beauty on your own terms. You declare, I can neither add nor subtract to your inner beauty. All of these lines in red are pure distillations of this person's identity. That's why I use this as a sample, because I ask the students who they are, how they got that way, who they desire to be. Well, this directly answers all three of those questions. You challenge me to confront my prejudices and self-imposed limitations. Okay, she's talking about vulnerability. Don't escape the pain you experienced, the imperfection around you. Grow from it, you plead. I first saw you hugging a light pole beside a busy bus stop. At first, I didn't realize the gun you waved was pointing back at you. Then your anti-war message hit me, breaking through my well-constructed defenses far more effectively than any slick sales pitch ever could. What is going on here? Aha, and then there were not the denouement. Advertisements can broadcast false versions of reality and undercut the viewer's sense of self. Most seem to do just that. In particular, ads seem to target women's self-worth, exploiting their fears and insecurities. The very purpose of most advertising, it seems, is to shout out to women, you're not sexy enough or accomplished enough on your own. Look how flawed you are, how incomplete you are. If only you had me. Your life would be complete. Ads also challenge women's individuality. They demand, unless you brand yourself with me, you have no style, no taste. When I see herds of Gucci wearing lemmings walking the streets, I see victims of modern advertising who surrendered to this repressive message and allow themselves to be branded. On the other hand, ads can inspire viewers, even dare individuals, to consider a reality where others suffering counts. I believe all art and advertisements as commercial art should do just that. Fundamentally, unless a viewer feels encouraged and touched, she will not have the inner strength to make meaningful choices in herself or in society. I want to make commercial art that promotes meaningful ideas. I want to challenge the current standard of marketing that undercuts women. So we, we went from this very mysterious dialogue with these two unknown others to a clear statement of this individual's um, views about advertising. It demonstrates self-knowledge, it uses the magical you, it creates mystery, the method of delivery, it is a letter, is it a conversation? It doesn't have too much description and it's very simple in many forms. We've reached the 28 minute mark. I'm gonna rush through the why school and why major essays so we can discuss those in more detail. We'll have a little bit to talk about. So when I help students with the why school and my and why major essays, I ask them to pick a focus. Is it unique? Is it realistic? Is it in line with what you want to do? And is it a believable story? Right? And then do a search of that. For example, let's say you want to do Web3, the, uh, something relating to cryptography or, or, or crypto. Okay, then we'll do a search. Let's say they want to do it at Duke. Well, let's look carefully at what we can find. Is it unique? Is there enough information on it? Does the school have competency in this area? Well, these are some searches. The very first search, where I did Web3 classes at Duke, we've got plenty of material here. This is a very rich vein to mine. Excellent. And the next search we found, we have a professor. We have classes that, that pertain to this. We even have a reference in mainstream media to this topic relating to Duke and its commitment to Web3. Excellent. So I asked them then to hone in, talk about projects, classes, professors, and research. So I'm excited to attend Duke because of its commitment to blockchain and crypto research. Specifically, I'm interested in supporting the work of Professor so-and-so as they investigate novel uses for blockchain technology in the fields of biomedical engineering. Very specific. Classes such as so-and-so will give me the tools to develop as a programmer. So I'm just going to go through this generally now that we've already reached the 30-minute mark. Then I ask them to pivot. Don't just be a one-note symphony. 
talk about other aspects relating to this, such as art, where they can then talk about other classes. What to avoid? There are two things that I primarily ask students to avoid. Brochure lines, ones that can basically come right from the course catalog. I'm excited to take this class. This class covers this. Well, it doesn't relate to them in any way. It's not specific to their hopes, their dreams, um, how they want to grow. Nothing about brochure lines are specific. And you can see how I would urge them to, re to change that. I'm excited to take this will help me grow in these following areas. So these are transformations of those sort of brochure lines. It's more personal and more specific. It shows how they want to grow as a student, as a professional, and as a person. All right, we're out of time here, so I'm just going to zip and say the last thing I want to say is another thing to avoid is the cut and paste. The school, each um, I'm stuttering here because I'm out of time. I'm trying to rush it, but every line has to relate to that school. I asked them to do an exercise. Pretend like this is a love letter to a sibling that has 10 brothers and sisters, right? Or to someone who has 10 brothers and sisters. So if you didn't write the person's name on the love letter, would, it, would they know who this is addressed to? Likewise, Try taking the name of the school out of the essay. Does the reader know that this only applies to this school? It has to. They have to in order for it to be an effective Y school, a Y major essay. Vague references to community, no good. As this is an example of a vague reference and how I would have them rephrase that. Later, when you we watch this, or in our question and answer, I'll go through some uh, examples a little bit more clearly. Another thing that is very vague is just the research facilities are amazing or the department's amazing. Well, how so? Be much more specific. It has to be unique, believable, cohesive, and specific. So in conclusion, I will do my best to help your student grow, to develop self-knowledge, and to write an essay that is a work of art. But I need your student to be coachable, open-minded, and diligent. I will push them. This year, unlike past years, I'm opening my office hours to you and your students. This is my URL, my, my uh, digital assistant, wordmuse.me. And you can schedule a time right there with me. Your students can schedule a time with me. I am free from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. So feel free if you have questions to reach out. Also, I have about 40 vid videos as of, the, as of today on my YouTube channel about various aspects of the writing process for students to review when they have questions. Thank you for joining me and sharing part of your precious day. I look forward to answering your questions now.